Butterfly, I'm not your picture bright. I am a samurai woman who holds up half the sky. I haven't bowed my head, I haven't bound my feet, I have endured the heat. I'm not afraid to My heart when I took a stride I am your memory Stories of you and me Moment of breaking free So you can be, you can be I am I am mm -hmm. I am Hey, I am I do not know my age I am born every day My spirit can't be gauged I'm living to create I am I am Hey, hey, hey I am Ooh, I am I'm a grandmother I'm a barefoot gardener A lover, a healer I'm a memory Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited uh, that you could attend this very special event with uh, Nobuto today. Uh, my name is Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic Director of Art to Action and I am here with Pangea World Theater. We'll be joined shortly by Mina Natrajan. And um, why we just want to begin, as we always do, with a land acknowledgement. Hello, Mina. Hey, hi, Andrea, and welcome, everybody. 
Uh, thank you so much for being uh, what we consider to be a very, very, very special session uh, today with Nobuko Miyamoto. And um, just want to acknowledge, uh, we always acknowledge land and Penjia World Theater and Art to Action, acknowledge that we're on the sacred traditional lands of the first peoples of Turtle Island. Uh, for Pangea, it's an honor to live, work, and create art and community in the traditional and contemporary homeland of the Dakota people and work alongside Dakota, Ojibwe, and all the first peoples in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Here in, at Art to Action, we are based in Tampa, Florida, which is the land of the Seminole people. We pay respect to indigenous peoples past, present and future. And as we grow in our work of decolonization, we build relationships at the speed of trust and endeavor to move from acknowledgement to action. We invite all, all of you to introduce yourselves in the chat if you haven't already. And please also acknowledge the first peoples of the lands that you are on. Uh, if you would like to learn more, there's a link um, that you can visit uh, to find out about the First Nations in your area. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us, as Mina said, for this very special occasion. Um, this uh, really a masterclass and interview and conversation on directing with Nobuko Miyamoto. This is part of the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation, um, co-presented by Art Action and Pangea World Theater, part of our virtual series uh, being live streamed by HowlRound. Thank you so much, HowlRound, for your partnership and support. Um, our journey uh, with the Directing Institute actually began with an early field dialogue with the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. And today, throughout our session, we will be honoring the lives and voices and names of Asian American people in this very important time. Um, and so we, since then, the, uh, we birthed the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation. And we've conducted institutes in 2012, 2015, 2017, 18, and 19 in Minneapolis with Pangea World Theater, and including peer exchanges, indigenous artists and first peoples gatherings, a next generation institute and two institutes dedicated to mentorship and mentoring relationships. In 2020, of course, with the pandemic, we began our virtual series, which you are now a part of. And throughout 2021, we're offering youth masterclasses and conversations and directing the third Saturday of each month. So we hope you'll continue to join us. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are recording this session. If you are in the Zoom room and you participate, you are being recorded and live streamed to HowlRound and Facebook. Um, so just know that, although we will be inviting you uh, in participatory sections if you're in the Zoom room uh, to turn on your camera and participate. Um, so now I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing you to Nobuko Miyamoto. You saw her, um, her bio in the slides at the beginning, but I will say um, a few words about her. Nobuko is an artivist, activist who uses song, dance, theater to explore ways to reclaim and decolonize our minds, bodies, histories, and communities, and to create solidarity across cultural borders. Originally a dancer performing in Broadway and film, she found her own voice as an activist and singer in the Asian American movement, creating with Chris Ijima and Charlie Chin on the iconic album, A Great Land in 1973 with Folkways. In 1978, she established Great Leap, creating musicals, concerts, albums, music videos, and most recently, Fandang Obon, a festival of art, cultures, and the earth. Nobuko has just released a double album called 120,000 Stories with Smithsonian Folkways. And in June 21, her memoir, Not Your Butterfly, my, my long song of relocation, race, love, and revolution will be published by the University of California Press. And you can learn more uh, at greatleap.org. Um, so uh, Nobuko will be supported today by Carla Vega. And we are so excited um, to welcome these wonderful artists uh, to share their work um, with you today. But before we do that, we begin with a tra tradition at the Institute of Pangea World Theater, which Mina will share with us. Glad to do so, Andrea. Um, and uh, 
So at Pangea World Theater, we developed this uh, tradition or ritual uh, 25 years ago when we first founded it. And it was founded and created by the first artistic ensemble at Pangea. And we've carried it on to NIDIC and many of our other programs. We start our staff meetings, our board meetings with something called two minutes of silence. And the two minutes of silence is a practice. Um, it's a ritual of all of us collectively breathe, breathing together. As we know, many of our artists of color don't have the space to, uh, you know, they, they have to go to work, they work in other spaces and then they come to practice their art in the evenings. And so it was a way for us to step over the threshold, to be in a space together and to collectively breathe together. So I invite both the people in the Zoom room, the artists in the Zoom room, as well as our, anybody who's watching out there on HowlRound or Facebook uh, to join us in this two minutes of silence. Uh, I'm just gonna ring a bell. We'll breathe collectively together. Um, you can do, you can make it mean whatever you want it it to mean for you, it can be spiritual, it can be whatever it is, but it can be a moment of quietness, introspection, or it could be, um, uh, you know, just all of us breathing together. So I invite everybody to actually put your cameras on so we can uh, meditate together. And um, I will ring the bell and start. Thank you so much for breathing with all of us together. Um, and I just wanna say what a pleasure and honor and privilege it is to have Nobuko here with us today. Uh, she's such an immense part of the Institute and it could not be more fitting with what's happening currently around the country here. Um, and really uh, Nobuko, I welcome you to this space. Thank you for- Thank you. Agreeing. Thank you so much for having me. And it's always an honor for me to be in this space with you all. A reminder of <clears throat> the importance of arts and culture and our presence in this society. So uh, that moment of two minutes, I love and I admire you for holding that each time we get together, each time we start an exercise, each time we start our day with you. <clears throat> because, excuse me, it is so important to have that empty space. <clears throat> I'm gonna, wait a minute. So I wanna read something to you from something after my morning practice every day, I read a little bit. That's why this book is so tattered. Um, it's, for, it's the Tao. We join spokes together in a wheel but it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. We shape clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that holds what we want. We hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. We work with being, but it's non-being is what we use. 
So this place of non-being, this place of emptiness, this place of reflection, and just to be, be nothing, be ourselves, be in space, be in connection. And my way of doing that is physical. Um, so it, my morning practice and many, many, I hope you have one or if you, you will have one. Uh, it's really, for me, it's been a way to survive over many, many years as an artist to be able to sit down or move <clears throat> through space to feel my body, to be grounded. Um, so we're gonna go through a little warm up, very simple, just to uh, connect in this time that we've been isolated, uh, separated. Um, in actuality, we, we have always been connected. And all we need is to remind ourselves. So this, in a sense, doing a daily practice reminds ourselves that we are connected to ourselves, to the earth, to our fellow humans. We are always connected. We just need to be reminded. So let's sit in easy pose and just <clears throat> comfortable and um, close your eyes and just start making a circle. Easy. Releasing your muscles, your breath. So let's be conscious of breath. Slowly breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, let's reverse the circle. In, out. In, out. Breathe in. Really let that breath reach deep into your center, into your tantian, into your chi point, below your belly button. Be aware of your spine. Be aware of the bottom of your spine, your base. Okay, let's center again, okay? Let's just feel that groundedness, your sit bones on the ground. And let's rock back and forth. So we're going to arch your back and then concave. Slowly at first, arch. So you really push into the bottom of your spine and then you allow it to release. And release and push, release. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, a little faster. And one two and three and inhale x now let your shoulders release as you concave your shoulders come up and your shoulders go down as you arch exhale Shoulders up, down, up, down, up. Be aware of the bottom of your spine, the kundalini energy releasing. Release, release, let go, let go. Shoulders, shoulders. So it's climbing all the way up your spine.
Inhale. Okay. Good. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling your spine? Are you feeling loose in this your base point? So this is, it comes from my Kundalini practice that I've done for many, many years. <clears throat> and um, I think this is the one that uh, Mina likes, <laughs> where we're going to uh, make, um, lift your arms and you have your fingers in an okay, okay? And reach as high as you can, inhaling and <laughs> exhaling. So inhale, exhale. So with all your force, <laughs> A little faster. Keep going. Lift up, up, reach up, clasp your fingers together, reach up, breathe in more, reach up from the bottom of your spine, feel the energy rising through the top of your head, through your fingers, into the sky. Keep reaching, keep lifting, keep breathing in, and exhale. Relax your hands, your shoulders. Just feel your body at this moment. <clears throat> Let the energy move through your body. Feel whatever you feel, just be aware of it. <clears throat> if you feel energy in your fingers, in your spine, in your shoulders, be aware of your breath. Okay, <clears throat> now let's put your feet, let's get up on our feet and I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see. <clears throat> so uh, just put down your heels and straighten up. If you can keep your hands on the floor, fine. If not, as much as you can, relax. Relax your back, relax your legs. Relax your arms, relax your head, shake it loose. And go down again, bend your knees. Let's bounce a little bit, okay? <clears throat> Straighten, again, stretch. Feel the stretch behind your legs. Feel it, just touch your own self. Let's feel that. <clears throat> Touch your feet. Let's look at your feet. <clears throat> look at your feet. Look at these feet. Look, think about what these feet can do, what they carry. Lift your toes. And put your toes down, yes. Let's stay, take a step back. Keep looking at your feet. Press down your heel. Press down your heel. Step back, step back. <clears throat> and we're in the downward dog position. Feel the stretch, lift your hips. Lift your booty and up, raise up on your feet. 
and press down on your heels. Raise up, inhale. And as you exhale, make a noise. Inhale, again. One more. Inhale, exhale. Now walk up with your right foot, left, right, left, bend again. <clears throat> and straighten your knees and come up. And I just want you to touch your feet. Feel the sensation of your feet on the ground. Feel your legs, your knees, your thighs your stomach, your chest, and lift your hands and touch the sky. <clears throat> Let's touch the sky. Yeah. Wiggle your fingers, yeah? Wiggle your fingers. Touch the sky. Let's get, yes. And now drop one arm. Keep reaching for the sky with the other one and just lean away from your arm. But keep reaching that arm, touch the sky. This arm is free. But make a long stretch from the heel to your fingertips. Yes. And crawl the other arm up the side of your body, the side of your face. Reach the sky. Look where you're reaching. Yeah, reach, 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 let the other shoulder down, hand free, and just keep reaching the sky with that hand. Touch the sky and release this arm. Feel the stretch. Breathe in. Exhale. Let's crawl up again, side of your body. Side of your body, the side of your face, all the way. Look at the sky. Look, reach, drop the other arm. Yeah, release from your heel to the top of your finger. Feel one line. And again, switch all the way up and release. And let's center, feel the space as you center. Feel the space on the side. Yeah, feel space. Just feel the space around your body. <clears throat> feel the space. Feel the space around this universe of you. Yes, feel all the directions that your body can move in. See how low you can go. Feel the middle, okay? Spread your legs. Feel the space. Yeah, so your legs are spread. Your legs are spread. Your legs are spread in a horse stance. Now we're sticking more to Tai Chi, okay? Martial arts. Which I keep. Bend your knees. Release. Feel. Now, as you're in this space, I want you to feel the ground. Feel the ground. Whatever land you stand on, here I'm in Tongva land in Los Angeles. Recognize the earth. Honor the people that have given you this space to be. Rub your hands together. <clears throat> and 
make a little space between your hands. Your arms are relaxed at your side. <clears throat> you have six inches between your hands. Look at that space. Look at that six inches of emptiness. Are there sensations that you feel in that space of emptiness? Allow yourself to feel whatever you feel or not. Inhale, open that space, straighten their knees. Let your lungs guide. Let your chi point, that center, that space, two inches below your navel. Feel that, feel that space. Drop your center. Drop your center from that space, drop it into the ground, into the earth, into whatever land that you're part of. Allow that energy to sink down from the top of your head through your body and sink down. Bring your hands again in that six inches. And I want you to just allow your movement between your right foot and your left foot. Feel the weight shift slightly, just slightly. Find that comfortable space in between, between your heels and the balls of your feet, between your left and between your right. That space between Inhale, expanding, breathing in, exhale, release. Expanding, release, feel the energy. Drop the hands, relax your knees so that you feel in a comfortable stride. and feel our connection, though it may be digital, they, though it may be mental, it actually is there, our connection is there. Just feel your body comfortable with each other, with knowing that we are in presence with each other. We are in connection with each other. We are breathing in harmony with each other. Our heartbeats are synchronizing with each other. Breathing in slowly, exhale slowly. Feel your sisters, feel your brothers. I'm thinking of Sharon also, who has taught us so much about our connection with the land, with the water, with the earth. Thank you. And now, Carla, who has made so many journeys with me, is going to share a little bit with you before we go into our story sharing. Carla. Greetings, everyone. I am tuning in from Los Angeles as well, Tongva land. And I am so, so grateful to be a part of NIDEC, of Pangea World Theater and Art to Action. So grateful to be here with you to share. Um, yes, so we have, Nobuko and I have worked together now for about 13 years. Um, it's been such an honor to create with Nobuko to learn from her and to continue to, um, to share these um, 
these wonderful um, messages and exercises. So um, I know Nobuko, you have not yet introduced the theme of uh, the bigger, one of the bigger themes that we'll be um, looking at today. But um, in talking to Nobuko, we spoke about um, the goddess energy and, and the divine feminine. And, um, and when I think of that, I think of the water and a lot of the work that we also do just as we did through the warm up has to do with the elements. So in thinking about the water, Mami Wata, Yemaja, Yemoya, Yemaya, wherever, whatever we call the water, mother ocean, it's often referred to as feminine. So, and as we all know, we have water within ourselves. So in this exercise, we are going to stick with, we're gonna stay with movement and embody just a few words. It's gonna be a short exercise, um, but we're gonna tune into the waters within our body and imagine these words that I'll prompt to wash over us and it'll be an embodiment exercise. It'll be visualization, embodiment, and communication. Those are the themes today. So very simply, you're welcome to stand up um, with me again, or, or sit if you're more comfortable, whatever you're able to do. And I'm just going to introduce a few words. And I'll do, uh, we're gonna do about six words. The first word will be hope and I'll guide you through it. And then we'll take about 10 seconds for each word to move through our body. And then I'll introduce the next word. So let's start with the word hope. So take a comfortable neutral position, standing or sitting or whatever's comfortable for you. And imagine hope. Imagine what hope feels like to you. Imagine it coming through, washing over your body from top to bottom, beginning with the top of your head and really feeling into the word. What does your face and head feel like to have hope? And gently move your, move your body into that position and then slowly bring it down to your throat and your shoulders. What does hope feel like in your shoulders, in your chest, in your heart? Moving down in your arms. And then through the center of your body. Don't forget to breathe. Breathe in hope to every cell of your body. and then move it down to your legs. What does hope feel like in your legs? You can take a few steps with hope if, you, if you're feeling that. Feel it in your knees and your ankles and your toes. And now I'll count downwards from 10 and then we'll stop in a position or a pose or a tableau of the word hope. Continuing to feel it in your body. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And freeze gently into that position. And if you are on camera, you feel free to take a look at everyone's pose. I know you can't see my full body in this one, but <laughs> excellent. Remember that moment and then release it. Now I'm just gonna put out the words since you all know how to do it now, as far as I'm um, bringing it through your body from top to bottom. And then I'll just count from 10 to one and we'll gently freeze in that position. Again, you're welcome to turn on your cameras to share We'll freeze and then we'll see everyone's pose if you'd like. The next word is hide. 
Take a deep breath. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gently freeze. And release. So feel free to explore each word, whatever feels right in your body from top to bottom. Third word is reveal. Deep breath. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, and find a position and freeze gently. Great, and release. Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, Carla, physicalizing is so important for us. Um, and the word, the last word, the word that you used, hidden, really brings us to this moment right now. This has been a, a, a tough week for people of color. In Minneapolis, we're waiting to see if justice is going to be done. <clears throat> and in Georgia, um, we're also waiting. Uh, we're waiting to see if they decide if this is a hate crime. But last night I decided they don't get to decide. It doesn't matter what they say because they don't know the whole story. They don't know the history. They don't ha have the experience. And unfortunately, not many Americans have had the experience of knowing our stories as Asian American people, as Asian American women, because <clears throat> our stories have been hidden made invisible, kept from being heard. And so things changed for me this week. I was going to do a workshop about something else, but then I thought the stories of, of women, and also because this is, Asia, uh, this is a Women's History Month, <clears throat> that there are around us. I just want to say that I've grown up hearing stories about other people's stories in the films, in songs, in theater. Uh, I know these stories better than my own stories because I've heard them over. I've heard, you know, growing up stories. I've heard vict victory stories. I've heard history stories. Uh, but my own story was invisible. And because we've been invisible, it's easy to dismiss our experience and say that it was Somebody had a bad day, and that's why this happened. So my way of saying that you don't decide is by telling my story. 
And um, by you telling your stories of women who have meant something to you, who have given you nurturing, guidance, inspiration, power, who have sacrificed for you, who have kept the memory of your people and your families, who had tried to look forward to see where you were gonna go and give you a path to work, walk on. So I wanna, um, I'm taking the liberty of, of showing you a picture of one of my goddesses. And this is gonna be a prompt for you in telling your story. Her name was Hatsu. Nishimura Hatsu. She is the elder in this picture. She is my great grandmother. I never met her. I only knew her from the stories of my mother, who is the small, the child in front of her. My mother was born in America, in Oakland, California. She and her sister were sent to Japan when my mother was an infant because life was hard for her, their mother in America. So she sent them to my great grandmother. She sent them with a friend of the family and my auntie, the taller child, sat on the deck of the boat and watched as her mother and father floated into the distance. And she cried all the way across the Atlantic, at the Pacific, till she met, she, till she got to Japan. So my great grandmother raised not only my, her four children, three girls and a boy, and my, my mother and her sister. She also raised an orphan boy and the son of her son. When I went to Japan about 15 years ago, I learned more about my great grandmother. That she was an actual samurai woman. And in the song that you heard, I had to say samurai woman. That she made decisions in our family. She, she was a matriarch. She had power to do, to say, to guide. So she knew that my mother and her sister were going to live in America. So she took them to a Christian church and said, you should be Christian because you're gonna live in America. And then she crossed the way and went to the Buddhist temple. She took my mother and her sister to, to the, the, the bathhouse. She showed them how to care for their bodies. She raised them in her house until my mother was 11 years old. My mother came back with her mother, took them back to America. And soon after, my grandmother committed suicide. So my mother really didn't know her own mother. And she, but she learned, I realized, she learned how to be a mother from her great grandmother, from her grandmother. When I went to Japan, I was told to be a little bit afraid, actually, of presenting myself to my family because I now had a black son and a black husband. Uh, and maybe you can show that picture of my family. Uh, and it is known that in Japan there is prejudice. And so I was very nervous about presenting and meeting my family, whether they would accept me as a mixed blood, because I am a mixed blood also, <clears throat> and as a person whose family looked like this. But so I made a book of pictures 
starting with that first picture that you saw all the way to this picture and and offered it to them. And when the one son who, who uh, my actually my second cousin looked at the picture, and I was so nervous, he looked up and he said, oh, our family, very international. And, and I almost fell over, you know, with joy and with relief. And when I went to my family home, I was also nervous with these women, and but I was noticing, oh my God, they're really running things. You know, with this idea of, uh, of women uh, in Japan being passive and docile and, and obedient, et cetera, uh, because Puccini uh, made an opera called Madame Butterfly and described, you know, and from then on, uh, our image was stamped from the Western mind rather than from our own telling of stories. I saw that how powerful these women in Japan were in running their families. And before I left, I, I told one of the aunties, I said, you look like my auntie Hatsu in, in America. And she says, no, you, like, you look like Hatsu. I said, no, 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 you look like a Hatsu. She said, no, no, no. Your great grandmother, you look like Hatsu. You move like Hatsu. They felt like I was their grandmother visiting them again. And I was so shocked because I had never felt like I was really Japanese. And they took me on this journey and they showed me the, the, the castle or the, the samurai uh, fortress that this Nihara woman, Hatsu, was from. And I saw how, I saw the roots of, of who I was. I am the great granddaughter of Hatsu, samurai woman. So let's come to your stories. I started my story with the name of my great grandmother, Hatsu. I did a bow, the gesture, because that gesture in Japanese <laughs> Tradition is, is showing our humility and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable to showing the back of our neck uh, to someone. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a humbling respect and vulnerability. So uh, I would like you to start your story, your three minute story. I'm sorry, I might have gone more than three minutes, but because of there's going to be Break it. We're going to break out into five groups, and each of you are going to have a leader in that group. Each of you are going to decide who is one, two, three, four, and five, so that we don't have any breaks between the stories. When you go into your rooms, please take a couple of minutes just to relax, to close your eyes and to meditate on who that person is that's going to that you want to tell their story okay it might take you a moment to remind yourself it's really not about having a perfect story it's not about drama it's a, it's for you to remember and for you to share it's a beginning a seed and especially now, it's a moment of healing for all of us to understand how women hold up the sky for us. So name of your common day goddess that nobody really knows about, that nobody called a goddess maybe, 
or matriarch, but you know what they've done for you. You know how you hold them. A short three minute story uh, and end with the name again and your gesture. And the second person will go. And after that, again, name, beginning, short story, another gesture, the end, the next person. So we'll go in tandem without any speaking in between. We will just see this gallery of women. And whether you are uh, a male telling the story or a female story, a telling the story, it doesn't matter. Right now, we're here to honor and hold up the feminine, the people whose stories are not known. So, uh, can we? We're going to break up this. This is going to. You're going to be in your groups, smaller groups, for thirty minutes, and so you'll have a little bit of time to set up, count off, and do the exercise in tandem and then you're going to have a few minutes after that three or five minutes to reflect just to share what you saw what you learned what you felt when you saw these stories in a gallery together okay then we will come back to the main where we are now and share each of you will pick one person to sh to do a sharing in this last gathering of people um, before we wrap, then we'll do an exercise together. So, uh, go into your separate rooms now and enjoy. And no pressure. This is not, you know, to be a polished anything. This is just a sharing. Okay. <laughs> Butterfly, I'm not your picture bright. I am a samurai woman who holds up half the sky. I have unbound my head, I have unbound my feet, I have endured the heat. I'm not afraid to my heart when I took a strike. I am your memory, stories of you and me, moment of breaking free so you can be Okay, here we are together. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, Sandy, and here's the shirt that you gave me. Thank I you so know. much. I meant to <laughs> I meant to mention that in the beginning, but I forgot where I was. <laughs> so thank you all for being here with me. Uh, and um, Kiki, hi. How are you? Adeline, yeah, Tanya. Amina, you're with me. Gosh, okay. Are you? Yes. I think I'm in room two, but. Oh, you I'm are. How it happened? Okay. Nukosa. Okay. I'm waiting to Nukosa. be. Swept. Yes. Okay. You're waiting to be swept away. Okay. I got kicked out of Zoom. But why don't you right. continue? I'll just get a sign. Okay. 
So uh, here we are. And um, I want to give you a moment just to, uh, well, first of all, let's let's decide who's going to be number one. Okay. Uh, Kiki, you're going to be one. Adeline, you're going to be two. Sandy, you're going to be three. No, Koso, is that pronouncing your name correctly? Could you please turn on your, um, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name correctly. No, Koso. No, Koso? Yes, how are you? Oh, my Hi. gosh. <laughs> oh, what a thrill. Wow. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, Kiki, Adeline is two. Sandy is three. No, no, Kozo is four and Tanya is five, correct? Uh, I won't be speaking, but thank you, you won't be much. speaking. Well, we have four. Yeah, that's so, you know, people you, that are you have are holding the, the, the tech, the technical aspects of it. Tanya, yes. OK, so we have we have four of you in this main room. And and just to let you know that we're the ones that are being broadcast now, but it doesn't make any difference. The, the point is that uh, we are going to be the example so that the audience who is not uh, participating will be able to see what this process is. So I just want you to sit quiet for a moment and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and exhale and go into your own space. Go into the space of this person that you choose to be with on this day, in this moment. Think of why this person is important to you. What would you like to know and share about her? What she did, how she lived, where she was from. What did you learn from her? You're going to start with her name and a gesture. Maybe something she said, you know. This is not a performance, it's just a sharing, okay? Take a deep breath. And let's take this moment to not only to tell your story, but to listen, to allow someone else's story to come into your life. So if you go over a little bit more than uh, three minutes, I'm going to have this little thing to tell you that you have about 10 seconds to, to finish your story. I think we'll have plenty of time, okay? So, okay, let's start now with number one. Turn on your, uh, turn off your, your silence. Yes. Her name is Makarita Fa'amata'u Tivaseu. Matu. She's my grandmother on my father's side, my father's, my father's mother, whom I've never met. Um, she passed away a month before I was born, and I never met my father, but uh, his sister, Ime Fuamatu Lane, raised, helped raise me. She was the one, my auntie, who I like to call her the Maui of our family. She fished all of her brother's children from the seas and found all of us. And so I wasn't raised with my Samoan family, just my Auntie Ime. But, and growing up, 
I, I was torn because I wasn't raised with my Samoan family and I was raised with, with Hawaiian friends and family, but I wasn't Hawaiian. And so in high school, they made it very clear that I was not Kanaka Maori, which is fine, that's a reality. But I always felt this sense of indigeneity, I will call it now. And it wasn't until my auntie Ri uh, was dying of cancer, I flew to Utah and spent time with her. And she was telling me stories about their mother, Makaritsa. And all the way that she described her, the things that she would do made me realize that this was my guardian, the goddess that I've had all my life that have that has that has affected my movements and the way I see the world. When when things happen and I can't explain, that was her. Uh, my grandmother, Makarita, and and for and and since that time, I've always felt like, ah, oh, this was this was it. This whole time, she was with me, even though I didn't didn't know her. She was always with me, and that's my grandmother, Makarita Famatau Tevaseu Fomatu. Emerita Díaz, vente nena, ven, vente nena, ven, déjame enseñarte esto. My grandmother, um, the person, she's my mom's mom, my second mom. Emerita Díaz was born in Barranquitas, Puerto Rico, in the mountains. She um, came from a large family. Uh, 14 children. There were two sets of twins in that family. And my great grandmother died young. So my grandmother had to take care of her siblings. She was known as a great dancer in the neighborhood. They, uh, she was known as a very good dancer. And she had beautiful hair, beautiful curly, dark curly hair. She was a very good cook and um, she was spotted on a dance by my grandfather. He was interested in his sister, but then when he saw Emerita, when Juan saw Emerita, he said, esa es la que yo quiero. And he asked her to dance. And he said that it was the best thing, the best decision he ever made. Um, when my grandfather went to war, World War II and Korea, my grandmother stayed in the in the farm that they had that they owned and she became the one in charge of paying the workers organizing the farm taking care of the family she raised four children my mother is the oldest nilda wilberto sonia and awilda then my grandmother traveled with my grandfather because he was in the army so they traveled to panama and she took care of a household there along with organizing uh, women's groups to be together, especially the Puerto Rican women so they could uh, have companionship and community. And that same group of people were also sent then when they moved to Massachusetts. And she was up in Massachusetts also carrying a household in a foreign land where she didn't know the language, um, raising these four children. She came back to Puerto Rico and was in Carolina, Puerto Rico and raised me and my brother after my parents got divorced. My grandmother taught me how to pray. My grandmother taught me how to take care of kids. My grandmother taught me to be kind, take care of family. The family is important first. She passed away almost 30 years ago, but she's always here. She's always here. Nena, cuídate. Nena, cuida tu mamá. 
Nena, cuida a tus hijos. Nena, haz lo correcto. Emerita Díaz. Vente, nena, ven. Déjame enseñarte esto. Esperanza Agustín. Esperanza Agustín, my father, Urbano Santiago Agustín's niece. I first met her on um, my first trip to the Philippines in 1994. Um, she had uh, come, um, let's see, back then she was in her 60s, I believe, and uh, she, she had been in touch with my father. My father had kept, he was the one that came to America that stayed in touch with all of his relatives and would send little bits of money to help um, help their lives a little bit as all Balik Bayans should do or have done. And um, I was amazed uh, in the world. She was the one person I saw that moved like me, who looked like me. Um, and I had a camera running often when I was there and I would, I was so amazed. I had never seen my reflection this way. So I would move the camera to her and sometimes she would be goofy as I would probably be goofy. And sometimes I could tell it was made her a little uncomfortable. So I would, I would uh, follow up a blue with a camera and take it off of her for a moment. But then I'd, I'd sneak it back up and I would watch her. Um, she was a storyteller and a bridge to my grandparents, my father's parents who I'd never met uh, back in the Philippines. So I, I learned about their kindnesses, their many, many kindnesses, who they were in a community. They were rice farmers. Uh, um, they were rice farmers in Tarlac, Kameling, on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. Um, <clears throat> she, um, I would just say that in, in years, as years went by after my father passed away um, in 2007, I went back uh, by myself to uh, to, to see her. She had suffered a stroke and, um, it, it was, um, a really healing time for me to be connected. Uh, I didn't realize how out of, how to, out of whack I was until I was back in the Philippines to be realigned. Um, so she was this connection and, um, I will say the last, even though this is my gesture for her uh, in profile, because our profiles are the same, the last thing that I saw her do was this. And the last words out of her mouth as we were crying and saying goodbye after, you know, I, I knew I probably wouldn't be back in time to see her alive again. Her last words were, text us when you get home text us when you get home. And so it left me laughing. <laughs> so that was this and um, love for Esperanza Agustin. Singo bani tina, singa makosaza. Singo bani tina, singa makosa zai. The woman I speak of today is Elta, Elta Villagazi. Um, I, I hope it's okay, but she is alive. She is 86 years old and she's the eldest of my father's family. And the reason I reflect on her today is because the two of us, um, in our family are called Amakosa Zani. We are the, el I'm the eldest daughter in my father's, of my father's children. And she is the eldest daughter of my grandfather's uh, children. Um, and because she is 86 years old and in January after my father's funeral, um, literally three days after my father's funeral, we found out that uh, she had contracted uh, the coronavirus. Um, and as you can imagine, because of her age, we all were very nervous and 
really felt and thought that we were going to lose her. Um, and, and this is why I felt like today, she is the woman that I needed to honor and to, to remember, even though she's still here. Um, it, it become like every day, every week, every month, we watch carefully the preciousness of life. Um, she is the joy of the family. She is my anchor. She is, uh, yeah, just she is my joy. She is like a twin um, uh, to me. I'm just remembering yesterday, I was on my way to my parents' home. Um, and when she found out, she was like, you can't leave me behind in the city. I want to come with you. I want to go to my brother's home. And it's become a regular thing since my father's passing. Um, and also what was happening is my nephew um, was receiving this um, herd of pigs because he's starting a piggery business. Um, and we were wanting to arrive before the pigs arrived, the two of us. And we we're trying to chase this truck because they told us it was ahead of us. And we we're trying to chase this truck on the road and we couldn't chase it. And we were almost giving up and you're like, oh, the pigs are going to get there before us. But just as we took the ten off to the village, we saw the truck waiting at the, uh, at the side of the road, looking for direction. And we told them, just follow us. And the man was just so confused because he was like, who are these women and why are they talking to me? And we told him, we know where you are going. You must come with us. And just for the both of us, there was, and for the entire family, there was just such a significance to this moment of these sisters, um, generations apart, caught in this, in this moment of being Amakosazane. So together in the car, we were singing, sing Amakosazane, ululating, ululating how we've been guided on this journey. And I feel like for most of my life and for all of us in our family, she's like that person, she's like, um, yeah, she's, she's been a, a, a guide, a person that brings a lot of wisdom, uh, a lot of joy, um, and just think the one that you listen to, the one that whose word is, you know, the final word, even my father's last year, we lost three fathers due to the coronavirus. Um, and my aunt, is just one of those people who has been such an anchor. And I just have vivid memories of her in all of these instances where we lost fathers, uh, her presence, her sound, her loud voice, just feeling the space. Singoba Anitina, Singamakosa Zane. Singoba Anitina, Singamakosa Zane. Elta. Oh, wow. Let's all turn our cameras on and our sound on. Yes. You've all told your story. Ta Tanya's not here at the bunk. Okay. So, what does it mean? And how do you feel? Tanya, you want to speak to me? <laughs> I'm, I'm here to listen. Oh, okay. So here we are. We Oh, and you've got Sandy, you put Yuri Gojiyama up there. Thank you. She's my spiritual mother, Yuri Gojiyama from the movement. If you don't know her, I'm just going to say, um, I'll tell a short story about her. Free the land. Free the land. This is what Yuri Gochiyama, who, who was a Nisei, second generation Japanese American, born in San Pedro, who went to Jerome concentration camp. And after Jerome, married a Nisei soldier, a 442, who had gone to France to help liberate France while his family was in camp. And after they got married, they, instead of going 
to the West Coast again. They went to, to New York City and chose to live in Harlem because they wanted to know what Black people had experienced. They had lived the Japanese American experience and they raised six children in a Harlem uh, housing uh, community on 126th Street. She met Malcolm X and was questioning him at first, you know, about his ideas. She had the nerve to actually question things and became really a good friend. And then she was in the auditorium when Malcolm was murdered. And without thinking, she ran up on the stage and covered his, her, his body with hers to protect him. There's a picture of her in Life magazine uh, doing this. She didn't think about her own safety. She just ran up there and tried to protect him. And uh, she's the one who brought me into the movement. She joined uh, not only the Asian Americans and brought Asian Americans together, but she also uh, was a part of, of a group called Republic of New Africa. This was a group following uh, Malcolm X's uh, ideology and, and was demanding five states in the sub South that black people could live as free people. This crazy idea, but a powerful idea. If you don't want us in New York City and Los Angeles and wherever else, give us five states to live in, the ones that we work the land. And they, so they call themselves Republic of New Africa. And uh, they had a saying, free the land. So when they greeted people, and, and she was one of them, they didn't call themselves a member of the organization. They were citizens. And Yuri Gochiamo was a citizen of the Republic of New Africa, who always said, free the land. So that's my little story about Yuri. Thank you for giving me the opportunity <laughs> to share her with you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for that. So, wow. What did it feel like to, to see our stories together? How did you feel? It was a very vulnerable feeling for me, but it also felt like I was in this collective of other women. And so it wasn't a lonely feeling because I knew that we were all speaking about our gods, our, our guides and our goddesses. And there was a conversation last night about powerful Pacific women in our lives. And I didn't get to tell my story because I was so emotional, but I feel like this was very specific. This is a specific guide. Um, and so that really helped me uh, tell this story because it, it was something that needed to come out of me. So thank you so much, Nobuko. And thank you to you all for sharing your stories and your goddesses. Thank you. Ooh. It says that we're closing and to, yeah. So thank you so much. I felt within the power of women. I just felt that power that everyone, we all carry. And sometimes, I, at least for me, that I forget that I have and that I, that I need to remember, that I need to remember. And because I was very moved by your story. Thank you. And I would say thank you. Nukozo, quickly, can you? Quickly, just belonging. Um, just a sense that I am not alone. I am not alone. I am never alone. Even when I feel alone, I'm never alone. I think for me, just, you know, it both in the, in terms of my own story and in listening to other people's stories, um, just that sense of things interwoven, interconnected. 
um, we are never alone. It's just that big, warm, fuzzy feeling. So we are all back together again. Yes, we are. And uh, so I'm picking Sandra, Sandy, from our group to uh, so some some uh, what we experienced in our group. So when we're coming together now, it felt like that went really fast, even though we had time to listen to some deep stories. Um, what an important uh, and honorable thing to be able to do right now uh, as, as a community, uh, how important it is for us to do this. So uh, let's, shall we have group one, uh, somebody from group one represent and tell what happened in that group? I have been chosen to be the person to share. Um, my name is Barbara Lavalour and I'm from Minneapolis. Uh, as part of our group was Carla and Joy, both of whom are in California. We were connected, so connected. We not only shared about our four mothers and four fathers, our, our uh, generations of people before us. We also shared the strengths and the, um, and the challenges that they went through. We were able to um, find areas where we were connected in the present day, not just by Zoom, but by where people live and the ancestry or where they came from, the countries they came from and, and having people uh, from those countries um, as part of our family, families. We, I, I felt a spiritual connection. It was, um, a, a very rich experience. We were only three people and um, each person was able to share as much as they chose to share. Uh, and it was very seamless, uh, Nobuko, just as you set it up to be. So we just flowed from one to another and then back around again. Great. Thank you, Megwitch. Thank you. Thank you. Group two. Sure. So this is my group, and um, of the my group members, group mates were Leticia, Stanley, and Hedy. And what we are going to do is um, just adding one small thing: the three of you uh, I, uh, saying the name of the person that shared about, just saying their name, and uh, um, and then uh, sharing our gesture. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So maybe we can have um, Stanley start first. We just do it in that order. Stanley, Leticia, Hedy, and then myself. Yeah. You're on mute, Stanley. My goddess was Barbara. And this is the gesture that I had for her because she was a loving, kind, and so supportive of a woman in my life. Guadalupe Gonzalez. Kuan mm. Yin. Kuan Yin, the one who sees and hears the cry. Mm. My grandmother, Lakshmi. Mm. There you go. Thanks, Nobuko. Thank you, thank you. Next group. Our group is group three and it includes Morgan, Sarah and Santiago. And Morgan is going to uh, do a short reflection on the experience of sharing our stories. Yes, hello, I'm Morgan. Um, <laughs> um, there was such 
pride and love and care in all of the stories that we told of these badass women who had faced hardship and yet endured through all of it. Um, the resilience of their spirit and how surrounded we all are um, by strong women and we all have stories of strong women and Santiago, um, Santiago was, has five sisters and was telling us how he could have so many stories and it was difficult for him to choose um, just one story. Um, so much love and pride and strength. Thank you, Morgan, for summarizing. Do we have one more group? Just your group, Naboku. Just my group? Oh, Sandy. Um, well, I, you know, I don't think we set anything up, but I would appreciate, I think, if we just went around one, two, three, four, five, and uh, said the name and the gesture, just as Mina's group had done. So Kiki, would you start us off? Margarita. Okay. Emerita Díaz. Vente, nena, ven. Déjame enseñarte esto. Esperanza Agustín. Esperanza Agustín. Elta Villagazi. Singo bani tina, singa makosa zani. Singo bani tina, singa makosa zani. Elta Villagazi. So thank you so much, all of you, for being here together on this day and this week in this time, because my feeling is that if we knew each other's stories, it would be hard to harm each other. There's a saying, some of them here that said, uh, you can't kill a man whose story you know, or you can't kill a woman whose story you know. This is why we have to tell our stories. We have to push ahead. We cannot be silent. We cannot be invisible. We have to find a way as artists to bring people together to hear to tell, to be amongst each other. This is our weapon. This is our sword of the samurai, is our stories. This is your task. This is your moment. We have many screens here. <laughs> we have, we are divided into these little screens, but we found a way to communicate with each other. We have many cultures in this country. We have many colors in this country. And we have to find a way to come together. Wherever you live, on whosoever land you live on and you love, you can do this. This is your task. This is how we take care of each other. 
This is how we do our little bit so that something like what happened this week doesn't happen again. So we are not nameless. Because we have stories. In Minneapolis, we work for justice because we're present and we're watching. So this is the theater of life that we're in right now. And uh, I thank you so much for sharing and being and doing what you do. Uh, we have time actually, don't we, Tanya? Andrea? Yes, we, we, we can close as you as you wanted to, Nobuko. Let's do it. Okay. Shall we go ahead and close? So uh, I want to share this. Uh, it's another language that is, is, is part of the, the uh, language of people who, who don't speak. <clears throat> uh, I had the pleasure of working with um, an artist who, Arlene Malinowski, whose parents were deaf and we had the ability to work together and she shared her stories as a child of deaf adults, a coda, they call them coda, because they have their own uh, <clears throat> language and their own culture. So she shared with me this, I wrote this poem and then she, she gave me these gestures and I want you to learn it and hopefully you can remember it. Uh, so our stories, so notice that stories is linking each other, right? So our stories are the maps of our lives. One more time. Our stories are the maps of our lives. Our stories open hearts. Okay, so it's just the shape of a heart here and open. Okay, second line. Our stories open hearts. Third line. Our stories break boundaries again our stories knit your fingers break boundaries fourth line our stories connect us to all human kind again our stories just simple connect us to all human kind Reminding, so it's the thumb to your third eye, reminding us, push down your other thumb, reminding us, we are all relations. Okay, from the top, one all together, okay? Our stories are the maps of our lives. Our stories open hearts. Our stories break boundaries. Our stories connect us to all human kind, reminding us we are all 
relations. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you to Carla. Thank you to Andrea, Mina, Bankar for creating the space for us to continue to come together. Thank you for the work that each of you do in your communities and for taking the time to gather together and the generosity of your stories. I wish I could have seen all of them. And uh, it's just my honor to be part of this institute and this group. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nubuko. Thank you so much for a beautiful workshop. And it is an honor for us to be able to work you with you and have you in the Institute process, really from the beginning all the way till now in this virtual space. We are so grateful to you, Nubuko, for all your beauty and wisdom and um, generosity of spirit that you bring to this work. Um, so now it is time to transition. Thank you all for coming. Those of you who are in the Zoom room for being with us uh, for the masterclass, we invite everyone uh, to stay. We're gonna take a short uh, four or five minute break and then we're gonna uh, listen to a conversation between Dipankar Mukherjee of Pangea World Theater and Nobuko about Nobuko's life and work and her journey in this work. Um, so we invite you um, say farewell in the Zoom room, but don't leave HowlRound and join us uh, on HowlRound for the continued conversation. We'll see you in just a few minutes. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.